And yet another beautiful episode of the POV podcast. My name is Kate Trira. And of course, we're here at the amazing Tweever Studios. We're getting it done today. And I'll tell you this. Anytime you're registering for something, um, whether it's bank, school, there's always a form you have to fill. So you fill your yeah. name, you fill your marital status, and you fill your religion. The guy in studio today... <laughs> I don't know what he feels in when it comes to the religion part. Because, you know, you feel in, my name is Kate Rira. I am married, single, or divorced. I am Christian, Muslim, Hindu, or Buddhist, yeah, yeah. or no other. And a lot of Kenyan forms don't have the, the other. other. Mm -hmm. The man sitting us with, with us today is known as Harrison Mumia, but also wants to be called Nyende Mumia Nyende. We're going to get into that. But now, <laughs> let me just welcome you to the show. Karibu. Asante sana, asante sana. In terms of the form, I think banks have opened up a bit. Uh, yeah. I see them allowing you to indicate other. I mean, other and so you, you can fall... always write mm -hmm. atheist there. Ah. You can write free thinker. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are banks which have not conformed. I think it's something that even in government mm. uh, offices, it yes. is still, uh, they have not provided for the atheists. Uh, you know, we feel sort of, yeah, in, the, in, the, in all these forms, trying to register for something. There's no bracket. You find there's Christian, Muslim, Hindu, there's nothing for, for, for us. You look at how we even swear in, uh, I mean, give evidence in courts. Yeah. Sometimes they tell you to hold the Bible and Amen. say, I, 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 Harrison Mumia, blah, 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 blah. We, you know, I was in court and I was like, I'm not going to do this. So how did that happen? So they told how... me to raise my hand. And... Yeah, but... But it, it, we are just trying to push that this country is not made up of only this group of people. That's okay. what we are trying to do. That is why we registered the society. That is why we are a legally registered entity. Mm -hmm. And that is why that recognition allows yeah. us to go to government and say, look, mm -hmm. we are representing this, you uh, want this group of people. Yeah. yeah, you can't discriminate against us. And I think that is really something that is taking place. Pole, pole, we are, we are doing it slowly. There's a transition. Slowly, a slow transition. And all over the world, people are looking for diversity and inclusion. I myself... I'm a champion of diversity and, and inclusion. inclusion. Let's have everyone have a seat at the table because people come from all different kinds of backgrounds. And, and things are changing also yeah. because uh, people are also realizing there's, mm -hmm. there's where they're coming from. Yeah. But there's also this, the, in the middle you realize this is not me. Yes. So you also want to take a different uh, path, path, which is part of what some of us did. So how, how did Harrison land to this place where he realized the most common religion in Kenya is Christianity. Even our constitution is literally, um, it, is it, 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 it is It is a constitution that is... <coughs> it's based on it, the Christian it, book it, it, in some it, way. It is, um, let me just put it this way. Yeah. The Kenyan constitution yeah. is a mistake in as far as <laughs> it has included uh, God in the preamble. Yeah. We we wrote a constitution mm -hmm. when there was no atheist uh, society. Yeah. So the people who were given, and you remember the church was. Very I want to get the preambles that yes. we have a look at. The it. preamble actually says, mm. "We the people we of Kenya, Kenya, yeah, believing in the supremacy, acknowledging the supremacy, sorry, acknowledging of, the supremacy of, of the Almighty God of all creation." creation. Are you seeing like the problems of that constitution? So we, we the people of Kenya now, the question we've been asking as atheists mm -hmm. is does the constitution then mean mm -hmm. that atheists are also part of it, especially the preamble? So we, we, we've argued that we don't recognize the preamble as, as atheists in the constitution. Mm. We do think that the constitution, the way it was written, it, it did not cater for the diverse especially in the preamble, the diversity of, of, of Kenyans. And that's a problem that was, is a religious problem. The people who wrote our constitution were the religious groups. You know, they were given a lot of, these guys were given a lot of, uh, like, you know, we need the religious other groups. Other than that, other than that, you need to remember, let me take you back in history, Kidogo. A lot of, a lot of the governance that we have all over Africa is not the original governance we yeah. have. It's, it's mostly a copy-paste from either British, German, yeah. or whoever colonized you, yes. the French. Yes. Now, in the British um, system or order of how they yeah, run government, the, government. the Catholic Church and the Anglican Church played a very big role. That's why you see it being replicated in all these constitutions. 
which is true, mm -hmm. but then it's still a problem. Yeah. I think uh, over the last, th so there's a time when we had something called enlightenment okay. in Europe. Yes. And uh, during the enlightenment, you, we saw a lot of people now starting to challenge uh, even religion. Hmm. You saw people like uh, Copernicus, the guy who discovered that uh, the earth goes around the sun. You know, Kitambo Catholics used to believe that the sun, the earth is the center of the sun. Mm. We saw a lot of people discovering medicine and uh, discovering, you know, so many discoveries were made, especially in the 17th, 18th century, 19th century. Yeah. You've seen people now starting to understand light and the natural world. So religion also was challenged. And a lot of atheists now started kept coming up from uh, the 17th century, mm -hmm. even in Europe. Yeah. Now, after the Enlightenment, then we have the French Revolution, mm -hmm. if you, you, you look at what happened, mm -hmm. where they challenged now the, uh, the kings of mm -hmm. that time. Yeah. And after the French Rev Revolution, so we are, we are going through, so in Africa, we are also going through some sort of, uh, yes, we know where we are coming from. Yeah. We know we were colonized. We know we borrowed a lot from the British. Mm. I think we are now going through what we call our own renaissance oh, or okay. our own enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And that is why you find in Africa today, this was not allowed, LGBTQ. Mm. Uh, is, Even the is, conversation. Of yeah, LGBTQ. the conversation is now taking place. You'll find somebody telling you, me, I'm, I'm transgender. Yeah. Was not allowed in... In, in just a hundred years ago in Africa. Yes. So I think we are going through our own, even the generation that is there right now, the youth, they're not the same as the generation that was there 50 years ago. I think we, we are even seeing... Even literally 10 years back, we're even, different. Exactly. Because uh, 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 I, 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 I've got to my 30s. If I sit with a 22-year-old, of course, we're in the same scope. Yeah. Because we've gone through almost the same transitions yeah. of social media. Yeah. But we're thinking very differently. Yeah. Yeah. So we, 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 I think we are going through, I think in the next 100 years, there'll be a lot of Kenyans who do not go to church, in my view, mm -hmm. a lot. They may believe in a supernatural, but so many Kenyans, even today, the youth are not really, you know, waking up on the Sunday. The church is, what are you trying to say? <laughs> People are not going to church. No, I'm telling you that there is a small but significant number. transition. Number of people who are, I mean, they're not, I talk to them. I mean, we try to look at the social media conversations. Mm. A lot will tell you they're not going to church, but mm. uh, they still believe, you know, in a higher in power and all, power. all those kind of things. And I think that's, that's, that's just what they, we want them to do. Mm -hmm. to just stop believing the higher power and they'll be okay. Ah, so they're not okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um, uh, cause you, you kind of twisted my arm kidogo. Yeah. Cause I really needed to ask you this. Yeah. Harrison growing up, you grew up in Islando. Yeah. Tunangea Buru is a science. Buru, yeah. You were going to church. What church did you go to as a younger man? As a young man, my mom took me to friends. Nili kwa baptized. In Friends, Friends, Friends Church. Oh, sorry. So Friends Church, uh, Kakamega. Yeah. One of the dominant churches in Western, by the it's way, Friends. is Friends Church. Yes. So my mom was a member of Friends. my family, actually, even my dad. Even was still? A member. No, she moved to Catholic. Oh, she's not Catholic. She's not Catholic. Okay, so you which guys I, went I to Friends. Which I don't understand. <laughs> it's okay, it's her choice. <laughs> Just like you made your choice, you know? Yeah. Um, so she's she's in Friends. You guys went to Friends. Were you baptized in the Friends Church? I was in Friends Church, so I was baptized there. Mm. But now, Kukuja Nairobi, mm. Nile, you know this, you're moving from one Pentecostal church. So, you know, you watch like uh, TV and mm. there is this church that has people dancing. Kidogo, you're like, ah. Let me go there. In a bamba. Yeah. In a your church in a bamba. So you and your friends, like on Sunday, where are you going? Yeah. I'm missing in any watching in day church. Look to Jaribui church. So yeah. I think I grew up in a in 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 an environment where it's not like my mom used to take me to this church. I even went to Catholic. Yeah. At some point, because some of my friends were like, you know, me, I'm a Catholic. Yeah. So I went there. Mm -hmm. Uh I didn't like it because it was too there was no singing and dancing yeah. the way you like it. Was it. Just, just <laughs> like you're sitting, <laughs> sitting down and being told stand up, sing, sit down. Mm -hmm. um, there were these more charismatic churches. I think I used to enjoy those ones. Okay. They even used to play 
some music that was more contemporary okay than you know all the other music so, so it for, was, for, I, I think i think for me i was just like yeah you church oh pastor i mean the pastors were even youthful and looking you know? really nice so for a young harrison so, that was ah, right, i was just like yeah and but i used to believe in god though yes yeah i know that i was an atheist i think i used to believe in god mm-hmm. but nilikwana my youth was sort of moving from just one church to the other so you were not centered to one church there was no I was not centered to one church because you know again when you're growing up and your mom has not committed you to a certain church okay you're mostly going with a bit of flow you know and i think that's what i did you know my your friends mm. kidogo so there was even a time we had uh, this very religious friends of mine okatwambia now there's another church kuja tuende hii it's a better one and that church was really good because i i mean good from a I, youthful I, perspective <laughs> yes yeah i enjoyed it because uh, they even used to have cell meetings you know what cell meetings are what is oh so unapatana in an estate ah, so okay yes 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 e- each family has a cell so ni time ya kinamumia ku host the church mm-hmm. cell i love this community square now ni time ya mumia hiyo siku ni mumia ndio hata at a radio at not just hosting but mm. at a radio service sa, uh, sort of you also giving your testimony you quoting one verse of the bible that is that's what's called worship ile baadhi anafanyanga kila wiki inaitwa ngoje kuna ushirika na inakuanga but fellowship Fel, in, but in like from fellowship one itself, it yes. goes from one family no, like it, one it, house it makes the word cell sound we used to call them cell meetings yeah because i've realized even my church they call it a cell and i'm like that word it has a different connotation yeah. a cell is a jail yeah so when you hear that you're like ah. cell meeting so it was a cell meeting so we, i used to enjoy those cell meetings mainly because you know there was a lot of tea and mandazi <laughs> in part but <laughs> but mainly <laughs> mainly it's just cuz uh you also you know you, yeah, you meet person. you meet you meet no i used to meet really nice you know ladies uh there you know i'm growing up remember mm. so part of that is just the whole thing you know i used to enjoy all nice, that nice pretty church girls yeah nice pretty church girls and i'm also a nice pretty religious guy mm-hmm. so i think i grew up in this not so I, i wasn't committed to any specific church the way you know you're a catholic and you're you're a catholic till you the end you follow the catechism nah, and nah, everything nah, nah, nah. Yeah. so i think mainly grow yo and, and there are sundays when i never used to go to church but once in a while mm. so i think that happened until when i got to campus okay because in high school you know i was in a high school where you know church was sort of compulsory and mm. i think this is one of the things we want to challenge this yeah in a, in a lot of i okay me my problem is just i have a different opinion about it yeah yeah just go. yeah yeah but but i think it is wrong for me for church public schools should not make church compulsory like, where i was in a school where a public school where church was prayers compulsory. were compulsory prayers were compulsory every netwaje this thing of the Sunday, morning yeah. no even in the morning when you're going for parade prep no parade uh-huh. you know where the prayers there were prayers and looking back i think that was uh, i mean a major injustice to to me and many others but we are going to correct that we are now registered i think we'll push for these things not probably not under this regime mm-hmm. this regime is too leaning towards Christian. uh, christianity <laughs> so that was my upbringing and i think when i got to campus is when i was like because i did pass school very well i yeah. think I'll, i i i consider myself a very sharp guy sharp guy <laughs> okay you know when i say this people mm. like um say naya naringaje but no, i think it's, but it's good it's good to i mean if looking at myself yeah. mm. I did very well in school mm. and even the course I did was very competitive. Mm. I think that uh because of my uh need to understand things because mm-hmm. I moved away from even what I was doing as a, my course. I mean in terms of in terms of away from school stuff, I yes. used to also think about other things. Na religion was one of those things I used to ask myself, does God exist? if god exists why do we have so many sick people why do we have so much so many problems in the world mm. w- w- why are people suffering yeah if he exists if if, <laughs> there, if, is, he truly if is. there is a true god who cares mm. about us why and i think mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. now that i'm here yeah this is a question mm-hmm. that even the religious people are grappling with mm-hmm. 
I know of uh, somebody who posted on Facebook, I think just this week. Yes. A religious person who said, because of the problems I'm having, mm-hmm. I don't think there's a God. And I, I went through the comments, people encouraging him, no, God is giving you time. Oh, God, God's time see, is the best. But what do you mean? You're suffering. Like, you know, you, you've gone through so much. I, I get where he's coming from because a lot it was of... It's like a lady. It was a lady. A lot of the atheists I know as friends, they base their atheism on the absence of God. And I have friends who are like, oh, he wasn't there when my dad died. He wasn't there when this person passed away. They base the existence of, of yeah. the religion and all that on, on yeah. their misfortunes. Is that the same for you? How did you land? Is there any major thing that made you feel like, okay, this guy doesn't exist? I do think, uh, um, I, I think so. It's not, not about me as a person, but I think just examining other pe- other people's many many problems i think we came from a poor family mm-hmm. i i saw my grandmother f- uh, father died of cancer mm. um there's nothing we could do yeah uh, my dad grew up in a poor family had to struggle to get us where we were mm. there's nothing much we could you know do we lived within with with that mm-hmm. so you know my friends i've seen my own friends dying of diseases and all that so the point here is that it's not even about me me i think i've lived a fairly good life i mean i've not that my challenges are not as adverse as i've seen others okay you know for example i've not been unwell i've not gone through i've not been hit by a car and i'm not able to walk I'm, you know i mean these things but people have i've, I've seen I've people had. who have gone through a lot mm-hmm. and to me the problem of we call it the problem of evil within the atheist community we, the problem we, of evil it's a problem of evil okay so the problem of evil is uh in short why would a good god a god who is good mm-hmm. so if i tell you god is good you'll say what all the time now this is the issue <laughs> so and why would a good time, god is good. good so wh- why would a good god mm. allow evil to exist in a world which he created that to us is a problem. So I think, to me, that was a problem, yes. But of course, there are other reasons why I stopped believing in God in campus. Well, that's where I want to get to because you're, you've come from friends, you've gone to so friends' church with mom, you've come to Nairobi, you, you, I've been you all know, over. gallivanting, let me call it gallivanting. You're gallivanting around all these churches and you head out to uni, you've done well for yourself, you're in uni now. You're a free man to choose your religion, to choose yeah. how you eat, drink, and yeah, live yeah, yeah. your life. How do, who helped you or who landed you on this choice of atheism? Are there friends that you worked with? Oh, yeah. Is there anyone who introduced you to, to atheism? Yeah, I think there is an atheist, not in Kenya, though, mm. in America. I think I read a lot of his works. Uh, there's an atheist called Christopher Hitchens mm-hmm. who wrote a book called God is Not Great. And uh, there's also Richard Dawkins who wrote a book called... Uh, uh, Richard Dawkins wrote a book called um, um, which book is this? Um, Richard, uh, yeah, Richard. Richard Dawkins. I've forgotten the book. <laughs> if we it's, get it, uh, we'll write it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but some of these atheists in America and uh, many others mm-hmm. wrote books. There's even uh, Daniel Dennett. There are other atheists who I read about. People who inspired me mm. to and I could relate to them I, I, I could see really what they are talking about is something I've been feeling for a while I mean there's no God it's just that I'm alone in this thing so when when I read their books I was a bit inspired I felt like this is it this is me I finally became Mumia actually <laughs> so to speak before you were just <laughs> before I was just all over the place but I finally became Mumia okay. I became now who I am because of some of these people. So if you look at like the book, uh, God is uh, God is not great. Mm-hmm. He takes us through this great God, but then he counters those arguments and says, "Hey, is he really great?" Yeah. I mean, when you look at, when you look at everything, would you say God is great? So I think, yeah, there's a lot of inspiration I drew from. In Kenya, there was really no inspiration i mean there are not so many atheists that you meet on the exactly road. Yeah. and not and think about it like 10 years ago or mm. 15 you know it was even like really there was nobody there's no conversation yeah no conversation around atheism so i think uh we we i i drew 
a lot of inspiration from some of these very bright and very courageous atheists. Mm -hmm. But also going back, going back to, because now with the opening up of the internet, which yeah. really helped, by the way, social yeah. media and internet. <laughs> those ones, I mean, it's, and they are helping a lot of atheists who are in the closet. Yeah. You, you, you now understand that even in the 18th century, 17th century, we are not the first ones. Kunawatu wa Mekuja, they have always said, hey, guys, there's something wrong with this concept. Mm -hmm. But then you see, they have always been either killed by, uh, you look at the European uh, churches. Yeah. You, you talk against God mm -hmm. in Europe in the, 19th, in the 17th century, you're, you're killed. Oh, no. Because uh, that time the laws, there's something called blasphemy. Mm -hmm. They were blasphemy, very serious blasphemy laws. Yeah. And the church never allowed anybody to challenge mm. their doctrines. So you'd be killed. But look at what's happening even today in Saudi Arabia. You know, we've had uh, atheists who've been killed in some of these countries. Yes, because, in, you know, there's a way their country they, lives. Their country runs. Yes. If you blaspheme Mohammed, mm -hmm. for example, Against in, in Saudi Arabia Muslim, and yeah. uh, Iran and so on, you'll be killed. In fact, uh, if you go to Afghanistan and you blaspheme Mohammed, <laughs> blaspheme means you talk badly about Muhammad. their religion or you go against the rules or, or, or you go against their doctrines. But then I usually say if you're in such countries how about you just respect them and then go to where you're free because you can't find people in their home with their constraint in how they live their life and I, want I, I to don't, I, I don't them. think freedom is about conformity. It's not conformity it's why bother people who have chosen no, a why do you path? feel why should people feel bothered okay let me give you an example mm. I, I am an atheist okay if you go online, mm. we've been called so many names. I can imagine. I have been called so many names. Yeah. Have I arrested anybody? Have I taken anybody <laughs> to court? No. Do I feel, do I go home feeling, why, why are people bothered about Mumia being an atheist? Mm. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That ideas uh, should be challenged. Mm. If you have a religious idea, you come and tell me your God is a monkey mm -hmm. or your God is a Explain cat. Explain to me. You know, I'll be like, that doesn't make sense. Now you can't tell me, why are you interfering with my God? My God is a cat. I'll be like, you've, this, you, this is an idea you've put in the open. Mm -hmm. The moment your idea is out in the open, you've opened please, up. human beings are going to just, <laughs> even politics, yeah. when you go out and start running for presidency, everybody, they'll tell you how many girls, people will come and try and smear your name think, and try to, and I think they should, they're not doing anything bad. It is you to deal with it. I think for me, and especially with I Islam states, I'm always like, don't, don't bother their status quo. They've been like that for a long time, that, and it's been working for them. That, Let them be. That is and not you a, respect them for their choices. Which you, know, wow. But even Kenya, for mm -hmm. a long time, mm -hmm. we've not had anybody challenging uh, religion, for real. Okay, as a whole. Uh, as a country, as a country, in fact, we, if you look at our education system, the OCRE, HRE and IRE, those three. Yes. That's, that's what we were accustomed to. Mm. Now, with the advent, now, if I said myself, if, mm. if Mumia said, you know what, I'm not going to challenge, you know, we've been this way. And by the way, <laughs> if you want to progress in this, any progress, any kind of progress, yeah. has not come on the platter, on the basis of we have been, mm. any real progress yeah. has always been opposed of course. By, by people. And even in the Islamic countries, those people who are dying, mm -hmm. one day there will be somebody who will rise up and challenge successfully some of these things. Yeah. No idea is permanent. Islam is not uh, the longest thing that has existed. Human beings have existed way beyond Islam and any Christianity. Of, and any of the other religions. Any of the religions. Yeah. Uh, some of these things are as, as, are as recent as 1,000, 2,000 years ago. That's still a long time. It is not compared <laughs> to the time human beings have existed. Have exist okay. Human beings have been around for half half a million years. That's true. As as human beings. Yes. So and so, before that we were apes. Mm. So we, we still existed before that. Okay, but I counter that. I don't <laughs> no. I know, I know. <laughs> That's not the evolution thing. That 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 theory is a little bit different, especially because me I come from a community where we believe that uh, there are two, and then there were nine girls who got nine. Oh, yeah, that of, one. Da, 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 da. Yeah, this So, that, our this story, that, your this story, a monkey, no. Apes, no. Us, <laughs> we were not apes. Us, they were nine daughters, and then nine sons, and then we all got married, and da 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 da. 
that's then, how then, us we came to be yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and, then, and, then, and and i think if we could go back to mm. me mm. if africans could go back to how they used to perceive origins like that you yeah. know me i think that that would be a better way of i don't know why i don't know who came with this you don't know who came with i'm saying you know who exactly who came with this thing with the religion yeah yeah, yeah. you know exactly but i don't know why we sort of threw out everything through the window and decided, you know what, to watch an nice let me, to, let me to take you through it. Easy. Let me take you through it. You see, Africans as a people, they're very warm and compassionate people. No matter where you are you always eat a cup of coffee or mandizi or something. Unaingia kama kunywa ka chai. Naturally, we're very warm people. And when foreigners come and find that, they feel like that is being stupid. They feel yeah. like you're gullible because you're yeah. kind. And because you're liberal and you're welcome and because To say the truth, Africans are the most warm people you'll ever find in yeah. the world. Even to the point where they share wives and husbands. It was yeah. never an issue. That I tell people that they get shocked. And to to anyone else coming from outside, anona, ai, munafanya jevo. So and then because we were living in a very harmonious society and mm-hmm. we're good and we're happy. Mm-hmm. Someone thought, let's create like a a, a discordance kidogo tu kuonekane mm-hmm. kuna kashida mm-hmm. because wanaishiaje hivi mm-hmm. wanapendana wote wanakula pamoja mm-hmm. community yao na kuna masomo si ati hakuna mm-hmm. masomo ya kiina yake mm-hmm. na lugha zao mm-hmm. they didn't understand why we looked the way we did and how we lived in harmony so that's why they had to bring that car yeah yeah problem otherwise we were just fine how how did we throw away our we didn't throw away you know right now The fact that we and you speak English is because our identity has been drifted off. We're supposed to be speaking our national language. Tunafaa kwa tukiongea lugha zetu za ki. Unaona? So if and, and you see so the much. best thing you can do to anyone is to strip off of their identity. Yes. Strip them off of their identity and then they yeah. believe in your identity more. So That's you why think you, see, you think there was some sort of injustice yeah, there's in, that. in in there's what, a big what injustice. they did? Because we, we were ripped off so we we are no longer who we were. Yes, because you if you tell someone that eating western food is better than eating your own food, that when you're seen eating mokimo or bambla, yeah. Apparently wewe ni mtu akona shida yeah. zaidi yeah. kuliko ule ambaye anakula hizo zingine za dukani. So in terms of like <laughs> atheism, so one of the things we are also challenging Kenyans yeah. is to 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 go back to their own and I think every Kenyan has And the, and the problem is that we we have not written our own stories <laughs> our history is not it's, we, it's taking me somewhere once <laughs> in any kumbusha because I'm sorry to cut you off I'm just remembering right now I introduced you as nyende mumi ya nyende exactly what is this why is is this part of what atheism it's, is doing you guys want to go back to your traditional names no 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 that is me as a person mm-hmm. I don't like the fact that my mom mm-hmm had to pick an english name mm. combine it with my african name or mm. luya name and mm. then make that my identity mm. i don't want an identity that's mixed like that and you know something i can't even relate to okay. so harrison is not a, a luya name we yeah. don't have a luya name called originally harrison. originally, originally. <laughs> so what happened is because of the, the you see when we were colonized mm. the colonizers told us and this is part of the colonization you have to have one name mm-hmm. that is english mm-hmm. and another that is yeah. and can you imagine right now mama moto you anaza they have to oh have an english name an english name and i'm asking but myself si it is no but they they do it and they you'll find them getting fancy names yeah. and they, you see them throwing fancy names brigid cg what it's not even that fancy uh, and, and you see the thing consolata. is <laughs> consolata they even iv like iv <laughs> eh? there's a there's a name cg talia you know people are just trying to wait wait <laughs> no i'm thinking <laughs> as as w- what makes us not like our own african our identity. own african identity so and name so i'm calling you nyende now call me nyende what does nyende call mean call me mumia nyende means uh, it's a jiga in in, in a jiga in, yeah why would you want to be called jiga i don't mind that that is my luya name you got a footing in no, no, i have no problem you know you have to ask for you to understand what it means but if okay. i'm called nyende mm. by anybody else mm. you have no problem and you see i didn't i don't want anybody to hate me because a jiga is just an animal Well, it could be having yeah, it's issues. It's not a good animal. It's not one of the good ones. Doesn't matter. No, you but see, it's for... not one of the good animals. <laughs> Even take a chicken. I don't know who. Ingo you know, you know, Ingo but, but you know why, where the name Nyende came from? Yes. Is that my uncle 
at the time I was being born, I think my my uncle called Nyende mm-hmm. passed on ah, at that okay. time. So we, no, that's how sometimes we name names in in Western. Okay. So it could be whether it can be an, somebody who died, then you take up that name because you're respecting the mm. the dead or something like that. Mm-hmm. I have no problem with that name. The problem I'm having is in Africa. Why are we not? If you look at Malcolm X, what he told the blacks mm-hmm. in the 1960s, he was yeah. asking them. Why do you hate yourself so much? Why do you hate the color of your skin? Mm. Why do you hate the texture of your hair? Mm. Why do you want to copy everything the white man is doing? And he was asking very serious questions. Who taught you to hate the color of your skin? Now, today, we are seeing the same phenomenon in Africa. We hate even our origins. We hate our, there are people who don't want to speak. You feel better. I mean, I'm also speaking English. Mm. But the people who feel... So oh, when posh. you're speaking... Exactly. You feel superior. You feel posh. You feel you're now the thing when you're speaking English than when you're speaking mother tongue. And a lot of parents in, in Kenya and in Africa mm. want their kids to learn more English, which mm-hmm. makes sense because that's sort of the universal language. It, it makes a bit of sense. But you, you're not inclining them towards their roots of who they are. Yes. And I think to me, even religion, mm-hmm. we, we, we've, we've just taken religion the way it was brought by the colonialists, by the missionaries, and now made it. I was, when was it? On Saturday, some, Sunday, sometimes I walk around on Sundays. Yes, because you're not going to church. I'm not going know? to church, but I walk <laughs> around and, you know, people are preaching out here. Yeah. And somebody holds the Bible and says, the word of God says in the book of just think about that phrase. You know, do you understand even how we got the Bible to in, in Africa? In the first place. In the first place, before you tell Africans that this is the word of God? Mm. Does it occur to you that you're just replicating what was brought to you? Because for us atheists, the Bible is just a book. And I, I think oh, the maybe. moment you're making we, people the mad. moment we understand the Bible is a book. Mm-hmm. The, if I can be able to make an, people understand that the Bible is a book, mm-hmm. that will be a huge step towards freeing, uh, I shock you. Uh, freeing people from all this mental, from mental slavery. slavery. <laughs> in the words of uh, Bob Marley, in, in, uh, in our first year of law school, because I learned in a, I saw it in a Catholic school, we studied the Bible. But we studied it as a book. That's the thing, the difference between sometimes, Ramana, I, I'm always like, I wish it would be given in different contexts because lawyers study the Bible as a book. It's not studied as a religious context. Nikama tu mawe, river between. But now I get what you mean. I get where yeah, it comes yeah, from. Yeah, I think if Kenyans could look at the Bible as a book, you know what? But you, you see, you can't you... do that for everyone because you see, when we would, and, and you see sometimes when, when they do that in, and that's why um, this this topic is very, scared <laughs> because you see when we're studying it we studied the roman law and you see the roman law was governed by the catholic church which is the bible because they're the ones who introduced it mostly distribution so when you're studying the roman law you see it's only exclusive to students who study the law or are in certain catholic schools but, so to get that enlightenment... But me, but me, me you know, I've not done law. You, yeah, yeah, of course, of course you haven't. You got it on a different context on your own. Yeah. And, but you had to access it that way. For yeah. you to have that preaching of telling people, you don't look at the Bible as a religious book, look at it as just, you know, a normal book. You have to really remove them from a lot. As we had to do it because it was in our syllabus, yeah, shule. Oh, yeah. Unona, yeah, kwa yeah. wengine ambao yeah. ni wengi ambapo ata shule ya kuingia university yeah. ili waeze kuona masomo na vitu za kawaida zika yeah. kwa different. It's going to be a very big battle you have ahead. Yeah, yeah. So that's where you're going to have a lot of trouble. Uh, but, but so I think, w- w- so what I'm saying is the notion, I think for me, for me as the president of the Atheist Society, mm-hmm. the, the notion here is that we have taken, uh, g- generally speaking, as a as, as a, as a country as a community as as people yeah we have taken the bible as the word the religious it's the course called the word of what? god <laughs> and 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 once once <laughs> and, and once you make the bible the word of god you just need somebody who is a bit 
in, uh, like yeah this. you just need somebody who is just very very Mackenzie like this. Mackenzie like you know you, somebody who just can now use that mm. to now uh, derail people and make them do stupid things so you want to tell me Christianity has derailed people is that what you're saying but Christianity has derailed people because it's very difficult these days to tell you know who is coming on board genuinely to, to, oh. to talk about the word the, 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 the word of God and mm. who is using the word of God. And this is a problem with the word of God, mm. that the moment you accept a book as the word of God, you're basically saying anybody holding that book can come and tell you anything so long as, so long as he's holding that book. And you see, that is a pro that's, that's a very serious problem. It is. It, it, it is. Can, it, this guy can then say anything. It so, looks volatile. That's what it is. It's volatile. Yeah. Become a steamer. It could be you don't know the voltage, you don't know anything. So if, if, if it's a wire, you don't know how much you... You could kill yourself. People have died because of religion. Sure. Now we are seeing people dying because of religion. Because a guy held a book, said this is... I am... Look at... I don't want to mention names, but honestly, we did a press statement mm -hmm. on Prophet War as soon as this Shakahola thing came. Yes. And we said, Shakahola mefanyeka. Please get arrest Prophet War the next day. I personally think that some of these guys calling themselves prophets in this country, mm -hmm. a person calling themselves a prophet in Kenya yeah. today needs to be arrested because what that person is doing, mm -hmm. he's placing himself as a messenger of this God. And once you do that, the potential to attract so many people to follow you because you know now you're telling people look god talks to me so whatever i'm telling you is right from has been the truth and that's very dangerous because you're going to direct people in any you see people are just going to move with you because you're a prophet of god so prophet it's very of dangerous any prophet in this country should be in fact all the prophets should be arrested mm -hmm. nobody should call themselves nobody should call themselves a prophet or prophetess or prophetess those are people who Pre uh, Frederick Nisha, mm -hmm. who wrote, uh, is one of the philosophers I, 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 I love because yeah. he proclaimed in the, in, 19th in the 19th century. He said, God is dead <coughs> and we have killed him. And he talked about these people who preach. At that time, even we had preachers in Germany. He's a German philosopher. Yeah. And people were preaching and Nietzsche looked at them and said, please don't listen to them. These guys are decadent. They are people who the earth is wary of, mm. that we should, we should not listen to their supernatural propositions. Yeah. And he, was, he had contempt for them. It's the same contempt I have. I have a lot of contempt for people who come to claim that they speak on behalf of a supernatural being. Nietzsche said these are decadent people. These are decaying people. <laughs> he, called, he called the religious people decaying. The people who... So we're talking preachers, uh, preachers pastors, Anybody prophets. who tries to... Nietzsche actually puts it and says the ones who propose uh, a supernatural concept the ones who come to you with super super terrestrial hopes that's mm. exactly the words he used um but mm. looking at what is happening in kenya today maybe we are now rising up to the realization that not everybody who holds the bible saying he is this he's, he's saying that truth, yeah. he's saying the truth and that then is the danger again i'll use niche's words that's a danger of dangers that is the danger we have as a country that we have people who have realized holding the Bible is all you need to lead people in a certain direction. But if they are decaying. They are decaying ones. He calls them poisonous. And I, I agree with Nietzsche so much because it is, and Nietzsche says, these are the people of whom the earth is weary. Mm. So you, you can imagine how much Nietzsche, how much contempt Nietzsche had for these people because Nietzsche knew mm -hmm. that the moment you purport to speak for God, yes. you're just a liar. Now, the moment, and I want to now say this, the moment, the moment you see somebody purporting to speak on behalf of God, doesn't matter how, how, how flamboyant he looks, yeah. that person hold him with some very long, like treat him with arm's length. That is a person <laughs> who, is, he, who is likely to be poisonous. I'm not saying he may not be poisonous, yeah. but that is a sign that this is, 
likely to be a very poisonous person. And poisonous is not just about telling you lies or telling you things that are not true. It's also about imparting you with ideologies that probably don't make sense. And, and I think that's how religion works generally. This governance, this government has chosen uh, religion as its way to get in. Um, and it was the way. And you, you have been seen to support other political leaders who are really not singing or dancing to the Christian tune or to the religious yeah, tune. Yeah. Why are you dancing with uh, politics that much? Because politics is, 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 is eventually affects all of us. It's not that you want to vie <coughs> for a seat? One of those no, no, no. Days. I think I want to also vie for a seat at some point. I would, and this is something I'm thinking about. Yeah. It would be good for parliament in Kenya to have somebody like me. The first atheist. To be in parliament. Member. And I'm just hoping there's one political party really. that Because uh, I don't think Kenyans are going to vote for me. Yeah. I think I need to be nominated into parliament. I don't think if I stood against, let's say, uh, Margaret Wanjiru or these other people, anybody really, mm -hmm. and, and people know I'm an atheist, I don't think majority of Kenyans would vote for me simply because it is much easier for a religious person. I mean, really, even if you're not really good, Kenyans would run away from an atheist being a leader. And I'll tell for, you for, why. For Kenyans, leadership is about generally God. And I'll tell you why, because even when, when, when I was thinking about this interview, I thought of a name to call you, and the best one that came to mind was Antichrist. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. Every time I see Harrison Mumia in the media, you barely speak about any other religions other than Christianity. Christianity. So I'm like, is the Atheist Association of Kenya against Christianity or all religions? Because you're always speaking against the Christian church. And I'm like, we have so many religions. We have the Mongeke, the Rastafari exists, all these people. <sighs> but then for me, when I look at you, I'm like, every time you're anti-Christianity. I am anti-Christian. Because you were a Christian one time. Because I was a Christian one time. And also, if you look at the population statistics, which were released in 2019, the latest census that was done, Christianity is, is, is the most populous. It's the, the, it's the leading religion in terms of numbers. People who profess Christianity in Kenya are more than the Muslims and, of course, the Hindus and all that. Mm. So now, <coughs> if we are to confront, if we are to, to, if we are to confront religious ideologies, yes. You're, you're sort of which is atheism if you ask me no no, no that's not atheism that okay. I'm, I'm an i'm a what you call them i am an anti-theist so that's another term you have to like learn about okay so you can be an atheist mm -hmm. who is an anti-theist which basically means you don't believe in god but you really have a lot of problems with the way religion is being propagated the lies, the inconsistencies. The, for example, when I talk about the problem of evil, mm. I have a, I'm an atheist. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I'm not supposed to be uh, sort of talking about even the Bible because everybody you cannot believe. So Zach, I should be like, okay, I'm an atheist. You what, 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 what? Mm. So the problem now becomes is you're an atheist, but then you're seeing religion propagating sort of bad things that you don't like. Okay. For example, telling Prophet Or, for example, saying. You come to my crusade, you're going to be healed. You mm. know very well. I know very well those things are in a kwanga effect on the ground. Kwa ground. But if I, know, I know he will listen to me and he'll be like, this guy. If you believe. This is a problem. That's a problem. So I think uh, the problem is actually. So I'm in the house. I watch Prophet O'War. Mm -hmm. He's brought in some guys to act. Mm. They have acted. Then he tells you, when you come, you have to believe. How many guys are going to troop to his crusade? A million. Because they want to be. Because they, they want to come there believing. So that is why I'm saying these are poisonous issues. These are poisonous But we cannot people. say it's only Christianity. The, the odds oh, are, I agree. are I, many. I agree. But we had Unakumbuka Nini Babu Waloliondo. That was Christian. Oh, that was guy was. Uh, was that? Your Loliondo thing was, was not a Christian. It was some guy who just came up with some water. Some 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 drink. Yes. And said this if you come and drink this drink. You will heal. You will heal. And uh again, that's so a dangerous. It's not unique to Christianity. Yeah, but you see we can't so as an atheist, mm. remember our focus is this. As an who is an atheist, mm. a person who does not hold the position that God exists. Yes. That's what I am. I'm an atheist. So when you talk about God, then you're obviously talking about religion. So our Loliondo 
if you, we are to talk about them, of course, we have issues with anybody purporting. That's now issues of regulation. Okay. You can't have somebody coming and purporting to have water that can heal. Ideally, the government should be able to har arrest that guy. You remember yeah. Professor, uh, this guy who came up with some medicine for AIDS, HIV AIDS, Kitambo? Professor... Or what? Oh, uh, nani. Obel. Obel. Arthur Obel. Arthur okay, Obel. Okay, okay, be careful with Obel because I went to school with his daughter and it's not actually a lie. He was just demystified by the American Association of Health. It's that one, no. <laughs> but Obel, but remember the government, how it really, really clamped down. Okay, I'm not... I'm not... Yeah, the government... The government but remember, also, the government is... And I don't even want to... You guys have to cut that out. <laughs> With Professor Bell, it's different. Because sometimes the powers that be there will not allow exactly. some things to be. But then... In, in, so if, and remember, if, our if government Professor, is just at the bottom of the... If Professor Bell was clamped down upon, mm. then w people like Loliondos... Should be regulated Should be well. even like... At least at, 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 like, <laughs> at, like at least Professor Bell was like, hey, I've done my research, I've tested nini nini. Loliondo guy just brings up water. And this is the holy water Mackenzie is, is also carrying around. Oh. You know Mackenzie has some water which he gives himself. With Ezekiel as well? Does Not Mackenzie, sorry. Ezekiel Pastor sells Ezekiel, some yeah. water. He says holy this water, water, if you drink it, you want what nini nini. Anointing. Anointing water. I don't know, but he sells it a hundred bob. How many guys buy that water? Mil thousands of people you buy that water. You know the risk of this, let me tell you, and you, if you didn't see it, once Pastor Ezekiel was arrested, um, when you persecute religious people, because it is in the context of the Bible that they will be persecuted, so it fulfills a certain prophecy. <laughs> let me tell you the effect. And, and you have a very big battle in oh front of goodness. you. Oh my goodness. So, so you, to you, them, they are saying we are in the last let days. Me let me show you literal <laughs> evidence of how it's going to work. You arrest Pastor Ezekiel. You know, you're persecuting the prophets. Wow. The next thing you have them pe people standing outside his prison praying and singing for oh, him. Yeah. So there's a really big side effect of speaking against religion in that way, in a combative you know, way. You know what? You know what? Mm. I have been told that mm. I am one of the signs. Persecutors. Oh, yeah. Of the last days. <laughs> Me, Mimumia. I am the person, the Bible. I'm one of the people the Bible prophesies about when we came to the last days. Mm. So people see me as a manifestation of the prophecy. Of, of the, the revelation. I'm, I'm a revelation. So after me and mm. a few others like me, Jesus is going to come. Okay. That's how people see it. See, see me. And, um, you know, you think about these things and you wonder, am I even the person to bring this message to Kenyans? <laughs> <laughs> well, you took the role of chair, I, president I, of I, atheists. So. I, I, is it the right time? This is a question you ask. Mm. Is it really the right time to For. be a president of atheists in Kenya? Sometimes it, I ask myself... You're coming at a hot time. Because I'm coming at a time when people look at me and they're like, this was written oh, in your wallet. Ah, and your wallet will be Bible. <laughs> you know? And you, you, you're like, guys, I am coming from the mountain. I have this wisdom I'm bringing you. Mm. How can you dare say I am a manifestation of the prophecies of the Bible? Then you're like, oh shit. <laughs> Do I just go back to what I like doing or what? Because these, these people, they won't listen to me. And I think that's where Kenya is. Mm. Anytime I come and, you know, you look at my social media, anytime I'm on TV, I talk and people are like, this guy is lost. I was in Amatatu yesterday coming from, you know, Thika. Yeah. Kuna mama alingia kwa hiyo gari aka akasema ati ni shuke aliniangalia tu akasema huyu tusha muone kwa TV ama hataki kwa na mtu kama huyu kwa atafanya gari kwa gari ama atafanya gari yanguke I don't know Ito bidu nunue gari yako sasa eh, Yeah yeah but you know but you see, when you think about it when I was thinking about it yesterday I was like I kwani this country what's wrong with people You know we 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 and religious people they are the ones who are most um discriminated discriminative to us they don't want us to exist. When we were registered in the society, I don't know if you know this. Yeah. I was in court. Mm -hmm. Go check petition 312 of 2016. Yeah. I was in court because Githum mm -hmm. the, the then attorney general, suspended the society. Why? Because Kinamak Karaoke and uh, this uh, other guy of Jesus is Alive Ministries, mm -hmm. this lady, Margaret came Chichu. and held a press statement and said, this is a Christian country, we can't allow atheism. So what does Githum do? Because... Mm -hmm of politics, political mm -hmm. expediency, yeah. suspends our society. I spent two years in court before Justice um, Chacha Muita. Mm -hmm. And Chacha Muita find that, found that their registration, our, the registration was unconstitutional. Mm. So you see, 
we and that's why I'm telling you it will it change you allowing things to just be and let's live the way we've been living yeah. now that has formed precedent on registration of societies and constitutionalism yes. you know in terms of the law mm. on one hand mm. on the other hand we have affirmed that our constitution mm -hmm. does not discriminate against atheists okay. it, you can't do that it okay. doesn't matter who is the majority yeah. yeah so now here i am now moving to the next stage so mm. it's a, as you've said mm. it's a big battle so after winning that case yeah. yeah which i was very happy about i think that's one of the biggest thing i've ever done i think your I'm highlights proud of your life <laughs> of my life you fought against pastors after, after doing that and winning in court yeah and now i do believe that uh our courts still remain the last uh line of uh you know injustice justice in this country Trust it is me. true. It is true. But I want to ask Harrison on a, on a personal level. I can imagine how this has impacted your yourself, your family, yeah. and how you relate. How has your let me just funny question. How how does it affect your dating life? Because when we're describing young girls, when we're describing the kind of man we want, we want someone who's God fearing. And for one thing, you don't fear no God. So <laughs> I'll tell you this. Mm. Um, my dating life has been impacted by my public atheism. Okay. Big time, big time. No one wants to date an atheist. Big time. Ladies, uh, when they hear you're an atheist, mm -hmm. it just does something to them. Mm. They start thinking of how will our children be raised? Yes. How will With my an parents? Godly man. How will an, our parents? How will my parents? How will I introduce you to my parents? Mm. How will I walk with you? How will I tell people that guy on TV is my is my is my boyfriend? How will I, you know, for women? And I think when majority of women in Kenya mm -hmm. would prefer a guy even if they are not um, church going, church going yes. at least they should have an element of belief in God yes. so me I've come out publicly and said no I don't believe in God I can tell you from my own experience mm -hmm. women in Kenya are looking for the, you, you, you're an atheist totally not, uh, you're not on the for list. majority you're not on the list and uh, it's rather unfortunate because it also tells you another thing that majority of women in Kenya are um, be careful <laughs> or don't they 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 they, 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 they what they look for mm -hmm. in relationships mm -hmm. is not what in my view they should be looking for I've told ladies whenever they bring up this issue of you're not you're an atheist I've told them, please look at me as a human being. Mm. Yeah, look at me as Mumia. Eka religion can't because even you, you are a Christian. Yeah. Why am I trying to date you as a Christian? Why don't I look for an atheist? Because to me, that's not the issue. Mm. The issue is who you. So who, you would date a Christian you? girl. I have no problem dating. So a how does it work with kids? Because she wants to take them to church. No, I don't think you want we've that. Not, I'm, not, I'm not married. No, uh, when that time comes. Oh, when that time comes, mm. she's free to take their children to church. I have no problem. That's what she feels is right. Mm. If they come home and they want a conversation on atheism, again, I have no problem with that. You know, the point is, mm. children will be exposed to... And, and that's really a good thing. Children mm. will be exposed to a diversity of views from both parents. And I always tell... Uh, parents mm -hmm. you don't need to have the same beliefs what is important is to uh allow your differences mm -hmm. uh support your family i i i could bring my wife to a show like this yes no, she know she could be seated there listening to what i'm saying and yeah. learn something uh. i could go to church to her church and maybe listen not necessarily pray or even believe but listen and and learn something um, but of course, don't, if you're my wife, mm. you know, don't, don't bring people to pray, you know, in the house. You know, they have to come and lay I their mean, hands I on mean, you. I mean, I mean, laying hands and all that, uh, that one is, I think, uh, that's a red line. <laughs> you don't want to do that. And I've seen people doing this, you know, religious, very high, super religious women mm. like this concept of unaleta watoto, watu wa ombe nyumba. Sijui now, you've built a house in shags, so the first thing you want to do is to get the religious groups to pray for the house. That mm. one for me, that makes sense. I don't think if I married, I would allow that. Mm. But I mean, other external things, that's okay. Yeah, but no. No. Chai, chai you know, you know, the house chai. is secular. The religion practice uko inje. How, how is secular? <laughs> yeah, money. <laughs> we are in a secular house. 
in other words, religion is not the main thing in the house. Okay. But out there, you can go you wherever. You can live your life. Mm. How is but it? But no cashers. <laughs> of course, that comes with religion. It's the whole, <laughs> it's the whole thing. How is it, though, with um, your own family, your mom, your dad? Oh, yeah, your, my mom prays sisters? for me. My mom is religious. My mom prays for me every day. And my mom prays for all of us, I yeah. mean, our family. So, yeah. sort of, I stopped. You know, in the beginning, I used to have this debate with her, but I realized, and this is something I want to just say, I realized religion helps her. Okay. It's it what gives, she has... It gives her hope. Okay. Religion mm. has that good side. Mm. And hope is important. Yeah. We all We all need hope I there think. are elements of religion especially christianity that because it, it preaches peace love and being kind to one another those are good things you don't you don't, you don't need to be a religious person but to it be preaches kind. it <laughs> <laughs> i don't need, you need to be religious to be kind i think i'm one of the kindest people yeah you're just kind because you're kind you don't need to be told by a bible a bible should not tell you be kind just be don't kind. steal don't do don't, 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 be this i think i think one of the and this was a quote by one of the atheists alisema Mm. Uh, the, the, the thing, the tragedy of religion is that it actually hijacked morality. Mm. So for most Kenyans, and even the dating scene, so how are we going to raise, morally raise our children? If you're an atheist, because most Kenyans mm. believe that right and wrong is a religious thing. Nice like you need to, most, most people are here. Most do, yeah. It's lazima upeleke mtoi Sunday school ndio ajue vile mungu anataka tuishi. So let's go back because Mama Likupeleka Sunday school. You said she she looks for religion for hope. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How hope. is that how is that relation between you, your dad and the kids and your brothers and sisters? Because I bet some of them are you know. Yeah, so 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 so, so my brothers are religious and mm -hmm. my sister one sister is is, is is not religious but spiritual you know, kind of thing. Spiritual. There's this new thing called being spiritual. It's religious and I, spiritual. I I, I don't difference. understand what spiritual means so some people say you know me i'm not religious i don't go to church but i'm spiritual mm. but i think we focus more on how we relate we as don't a as a family yeah. we have our own challenges mm. we have our own issues you know i have a brother who you know um has had a lot of challenges in certain areas mm. we have issues within the family that we are dealing with mm. so i mean so i, I we don't focus on like your you, being <laughs> Mumia is a president because but of, because you know um i don't wake up every morning that's not the only thing i do actually oh yeah by the way <laughs> by the way for those who don't know he actually has a, a company a, a techno an it company an it company that yes. I, I i i run doviti so, do, doviti digital Dovti. technology you, you no, said doviti how did you know that because you do your research. Okay, fine. <laughs> it's called Dovti Digital Technologies. Dovti. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a company which, you know, because that's my area. So mm. we'll be doing a lot of web stuff. But, mm. so I'm saying that, so we don't, with my family, we were not waking up every morning to discuss. Mumia, Leo made release a press statement. But I'm always happy to share with them what I'm doing. And uh, they, they, they are happy to know that I am on TV intelligently talking about some real issues. Oh, what so, my sister my sister in? sometimes actually, you know, asks me, you know, Mumia, I think you're making uh, some good points here. Um, although I don't agree with you here. <laughs> and then we leave it at that and we move on. I so see like at it antagonism kwa family apana. You know, and you see, at the end of the day, and I'm sure, you know, you looking at me and, 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 and the rest of the people looking at me, mm. I get the sense that you feel that I'm a nice guy. He said it, I didn't. And yeah, he's a nice guy. I'll come to and juggle up a studio. It's an okay guy. Yeah, so I think no, no, baby, you know, I've been, I've been around so many atheists. It's not a surprise to me. Yeah. It's not a surprise you, to you, me. Most of the time, we're living just the normal life and trying to be as good as possible. Mm. But you can't be good again all the time because I, I think goodness again is not something you can't be. Naturally, you can't be good all the time. Mm. There are some, some circumstances that require you to, to be to to take some sort of farm steps to correct some situation for, for respect it's essential there's something i noticed because every time you look at the atheist association we can see your location we can see what you guys have done you literally today morning you were in court in battle mm. your message has brought a lot of battle have there been any attacks on you physically no no, no. do they come to you do they send death mm. threats 
no, I don't no, know. No, no, no. Actually, for the time I've been the president, I've been in court several. This is the third time we are moving to court. Mm. The first petition, I'm the one who moved to court. Mm. The second one um, is is something that has come up in court, mm. which we are defending. Uh, the third one is we are intending to move to. We want to move to court because of religious education. Mm. Uh, uh, in a petition. Okay. So um, I don't think throughout this I've ever been attacked. Nobody has come to me trying to harm me. And I think that's the beauty, I guess, of this country. Uh. Maybe it points to the fact that maybe as a society we are tolerant. Maybe mm. we are tolerant enough yeah. to accommodate uh, varying uh, opinions. Mindsets and that, maybe, yeah. <coughs> maybe the current generation, maybe which I think... I, I can trans. I, I believe in that generation. So <laughs> sort of. Well, I'm not young, but I don't think I'm too old to understand what's going on with the guys in their twenties and thirties. Mm. I think it points to the fact that also we are transitioning from a highly religious society to a more um, people who are religious but not super religious. Social media has. You know, I see they people dancing. <laughs> people, people dancing. I think people spend more time dancing these days than going to church. <laughs> Challenges, you know, on TikTok <laughs> and all TikTok. that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm seeing like people are moving more. Things are opening up. It's life is no longer mm -hmm. about which church do you go to. I don't see people asking. You know, you meet somebody you're like, so which church do you go to? No, I think people are more into like. What do you do? You know what do you do and uh, you know you like it's, essential it's, it's things essential things okay. it's no longer about uh although some people do ask mm. i've dated some ladies who've like been like so <coughs> me i'm looking for a god and i see it on a the god chance. fearing i'm man. looking for a god fearing man i see that and in my mind i'm like man <laughs> so, <laughs> and the end of the end times. <laughs> I'm in the, <laughs> I've predict. I've been. I've been oh prophesied in the God. Bible. You are the end times. There, there, there are also others who are like you know. They like me. Mm. They like me mm -hmm. tremendously. Yeah. But they are like, Mumia. Will you one day <laughs> change and start believing in God? Which is a question because one of your one of your secretaries in the association, oh, yeah. he got saved. He saw Christ, and now he left the atheist association. Yeah. And now resigned. Yeah, that guy, we wished him well mm. in his new relationship with, you know, Jesus. Mm. Um, he did a lot of good work for the Atheist Society for oh, one he year. Did. That's yeah, nice. he did. Yeah, he did a good job. Mm. We even wanted to give him a certificate of recognition. <laughs> Um, as, as he, as he, as to go to church with him. As to go to church and, 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 and give that. But, um, you know, I don't know what made him make the or rather find Jesus. What I think here is that uh, people have the right, and I think this now boils down to the right, yeah. to decide what they want to believe in. Mm -hmm. So we, we just let him go. We did another election, and there's a new secretary. Uh, and I think some of it, what, one of the problems we are having as a society is you can come and tell me you're an atheist. Yes. And we hold an election. You come and stand before us. Many other atheists. Exactly. And say, you know what? Me wasn't a secretary. And maybe mm. you're just up to your own shenanigans. Shenanigans. You want to destroy the society. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. So after like six months of working with you, mm. you go out in the public. Now you everybody knows you. You've been signing documents. You come and say, guys, I think this society, I want to I have seen the light. I have seen the light. So you bring us down and now there's people are like, we knew God is going to touch some of these people. It is evidence that God actually works. He touches even <laughs> exactly. the non-believers. Exactly. So guys are like, the president is the next one. God is God is waiting for the president. I bet at the beginning, a lot of people, you were sent to pastors to pray for, you know? I've been prayed for by so many people. <coughs> so many Sorry. people. So many people are, are praying for me today. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are praying for me. <laughs> Look, there's a pastor right now. Every day. We, we met with the, uh, I was on NTV, I think, two weeks ago. Yeah. With the pastor, uh, she, she was on TV, we'll check out the show, Pastor Latvinda or something like that. Yeah. She came on the show. Mm -hmm. Then after the show, we exchanged numbers. Yeah. She sends me every morning. Prayer items. Prayer items. Bible verses. Motivations from God. 
And she's doing that, and I understand what she's trying to do. Mm. She's doing it. She wants me to change. She wants to save your soul. She wants to save my soul from burning mm. in hell. She wants me to have a relationship with Jesus. She wants me to see the light. Unfortunately, she is on a totally different wavelength from me. Because people don't understand that I am not in that space. You can't, however much you do that, I am not in that space. Mm. You see, when you're in a relationship, sometimes you're like, look, I'm not. Somebody is trying to chase you and you're like, I am not in this space. We're right not now. going to work. Yes. It's gonna, not going to work. Yeah. Stop these things you're doing. <laughs> but here you go up to mama, unam kasubui. So what I just do, I allow it to happen. Now, many people are praying for me. Mm. I have cousins, I have pastor cousins, and these people, they are praying for me. But they have been praying for me for a long time. Mm. From 2016, 2017, 2018, when I was in court, they Corona. have been praying for me. Now I'm still here doing a show. So they are praying for me. But I think what they don't get mm. is we are different. And, and, and this tendency of trying to make somebody be what you want them to be. Yeah. I think it's some, it's some crazy thing, you know. You, you sit down and just feel, I need this person. Like, I need you to be an atheist. Why, why should I put so much energy in making that, you to yeah. be an atheist? Yeah. You, you be who you are. Let's mm -hmm. have a conversation. Mm -hmm. But continue being who you think is best as for you. As, you're as long person. as you're a good kind of person. As long as you're good, we can have a cup of coffee. That's it. Yeah. The idea that a religious, and I don't know why religious people feel mm. this privilege they have yeah. in them that... I am the one to make Mumia be this way. I want to tell them really today that uh, I am who, whatever position I've taken, nothing is going to move. There's nothing that has persuaded me to move from this position. Okay. Anybody sending me prayers, ninis, verses of the Bible, you're wasting, you're wasting your time. In fact, I'm more entrenched. Every day I wake up and the sun rises, I get more entrenched. To preach atheism. <laughs> in, my, in my atheism. <laughs> But I'll never come to somebody who won't be a poor atheist. But okay. I'll, tell, I'll tell you reasons why I don't You'll believe. give facts and then someone can Yeah, you decide. On decide okay. what you want to do. Well, that is, that is intense. Ooh, uh, I don't know what <laughs> book you read from, but I hope the POV podcast book of today taught you a few lessons on religion, African, and what we want as a people. He spoke his mind. He gave his point of view. And of course, it's streaming live on Spotify, Boomplay, and YouTube. This is the POV Podcast with Kate Trader.